Hi, my name is Peter Stanton and this is my shop in the garage at my home with the little mill and the lathe, Haas mill and lathe. And this particular video is going to be about the final operation to this uh, end bearing support for the 5-axis mill stop fixture. Uh, this is my old computer that I've, I've always programmed with for the, I've owned this computer probably for about, oh, I don't know, maybe about five, six years, maybe a little longer. And it's a good computer, but it's an awfully big, large computer. It's probably about 17 and a half inches or almost 18 inch screen on it. And the thing weighs probably about 30, I don't know, this thing is heavy. It probably weighs at least about 30-ish pounds or 25, 30 pounds, I don't know. It's a heavy computer. And with its gigantic, huge power adapter here and everything. And, and uh, so on my trips down to Mexico, I wanted something lighter and easier to carry. So I, um, I bought this Dell XPS 15 computer just the other day. And so far, it seems like a pretty nice computer. Um, I also took the dive into um, Adobe Creative Cloud, I guess you might call it, and I bought this uh, um, Adobe Premiere Pro software, which you're looking at right now. I'm going to start doing editing for the videos on this software here. Um, I don't really like having to join a thing where I've got to pay either monthly or yearly to keep the software, but that's the way they do it nowadays and so I guess you gotta join the creative cloud in order to use this kind of a software but it seems like the thing to use and it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for me this is like the first very first video I've ever edited with this software so you might have to cut me a little slack on that um, the software I used previous to that on this computer was just this I don't know I think it's power director or something a really cheap thing you can almost download for free I think it cost thirty dollars or something like that and it was alright but but this software already I can see is way better than it I mean it's it, and this computer is pretty good little computer and it, I, I think it only weighs like about four pounds you know it's a very light computer and I'll be able to carry this with me when I go to Mexico to, and do some editing on the on this instead of, I carried this a few times in Mexico and, and man it was like torture to carry that computer and run it through you know security and all that stuff so we'll see how this one works out but so far this computer seems like pretty nice a little computer so I'm I've already set it up on the table of the machine here uh, I got that in the video indicating it in and, and such so now I have to program it on the computer here and upload it to the machine and then we'll see the machining part of this. Okay, we're gonna place the part on the table with this face down and start the screws. We've got, got a couple of T-nuts in the table here. We're gonna bolt it right to the table. And we'll start it with a... Uh, line up one of these T-nuts. Get it just snug down. Here, I'm going to put a dial indicator and spindle indicated in on the x-axis. The easiest way to do this if you don't want to fight a bunch of back and forth is to um, is to line your indicator up with one of these screws here doesn't matter this one or that one wouldn't matter and snug that screw down a little bit make sure this one's not tight and then uh, zero your indicator right uh, uh, across from that screw so when you tap this part around it's going to more or less rotate around that screw and it's not going to change this setting too much over here it will a little because this is rocking around the radius of the screw. When you indicate your vise in, you can do the same thing by tightening one side of the 
one tie down on one side of the vise and zeroing there and then running back and forth and tapping the, the vise around just like we'll do here and um, it, it, it's just a little faster to do it that way so if I, if I get a reading on the indicator here just get it well, I'll just leave that zero like that now I don't know if you can see that very well. Let me let me zoom in on it a little bit here. It's sitting on zero right now. It's kind of a little hard for you to see still, but so when I move it back and forth now in the X, see my readings. I think that's coming into the. It's falling away from the indicator, so I can tap this over a little bit and bring it up close to the zero and see when I run back over here see it changed very little adjacent to that screw I'll re-zero it here and this is just a faster way to indicate something see we're just only a a little bit off now and it reduces the amount you have to go back and forth if you do that Otherwise, if you just set your indicator, you know, you set your zero way over here to start with, when you when you tip this thing around this screw, that's going to change a lot. So you zero the indicator right straight across from the screw, where it's not going to change very much. And then, uh, then you don't have to go back and forth so much. I'm going to snug this up a little bit. Even tightening those screws can change your setting a little bit as you do these kind of things. You'll kind of realize that. I see we're about a couple of tenths of a thousand. Let me see if I can get rid of that here. I think it's got to go towards. I tighten that screw pretty tight. So I, I tighten this screw up and then I loosen that one and I had a couple of tents there on the indicator. I'm gonna snug both the screws up pretty good and check it again. See it's it's got a good zero all the way across it now. I'm gonna really tighten them down tight now. And I'm sure that I'm good. So, let's see. We're going to probe the part and we're going to do it exactly the same as we did before in the X first. Okay, so that's the fixture offset G54 set. Okay, here's the graphics in the cam software, it's spree cam software of the part, just to show what's going to happen when it gets machined. I've, you might see these uh, holes right here. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. These, I've rotated these four holes 45 degrees because, remember, we have that tapped hole that we didn't really want in here and it, it's going to intersect this hole if we leave it right here so I rotated them so that we wouldn't have that problem and they, they just hold the end cap on so it's not going to make any difference that part of it because it'll just rotate the cap 45 degrees and it, it's symmetrical so it doesn't really matter it just covers the end of the shaft keep the uh, coolant and shavings out of there out of the bearings let me run the graphics here so you can see kind of what's happening. Come in and, and rough out the bore with the half inch end mill. And uh, I think it's taking four steps down. 
in Z. So it roughs that out and then it drills and taps the four holes and then we run the boring head. But before we run the boring head, we're going to carefully indicate the bore below that we did from the other side and make sure that we're aligned perfectly with it or as close as we can get it before it runs that boring head. So we'll have to adjust the fixture offset, maybe. Maybe it'll be good. We'll see how close that is. That'll be kind of interesting to see how close that bore is actually to the other side when we get to that point.
back it off one uh, one revolution, which is a four thousandths of an inch, because we already had it set to bore the other side, so we know it's pretty close. Don't have to worry too much. But before we do that, we're going to take this out right now and. Uh, Set that on the bench. Put our dial indicator in there because I let it come over to the position of the bore. And let's see if we can indicate this bore and see where we're at. Probably can't see that there. Here's like we're, um, let's jog it over. What we want to do is we'll set our fixture offset, we'll get this lined up on the Board. Okay, that looks pretty good like that. And now we'll set the um, fixture offset so we're reading exactly where the location of this board hole is. And it looks like it's, it wasn't off very much. It was off uh, two ten thousandths of an inch in an X and four ten thousandths of an inch in Y. So what we got to do is move the fixture offset, even though the fixture zero is over here at the keyway, we're going to move it so that this is at five inches in Y and zero on X here. So, so now put the back in, we'll bore the hole, take the first pass at it. Now what I did was I put a, um, a go-to statement in the program so that I don't have to keep restarting this. It's gonna it's gonna bore the hole here and then come up and position the table forward. Adjust our boring head here. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go one, two, three thousandths. One and a half thousandths.
it's almost dead nut on the size. It's, I mean, there, there's no play to that. It slides right in there. That's good. It's kind of the way I wanted it. Oop, I got it in the bar. Wow. It's a close fit. So there's the, um, Bearing races in there, they fit real close. I mean, I could move them, but there is no play in there. But I can actually, I don't know if you can see that. See, I can actually slide that race in and out, but there's no, there's no play at all to those. They fit very nicely. I don't know if you can actually I can I don't know if you can see that on there I can slide the race in and out but it won't even fall well that one did just barely fit very nicely in there so that will be the bearings and then the shaft the shaft has a the roller this is this is going to be shrink fit into the fixture the end of the fixture and there's going to be a oil seal as well pressed in here in this counter bore actually it's going to go this way and uh so that'll be pressed into that bore i don't want to put that in right at the moment so so that fits over the the end of the shaft here when it's in there to seal off even more and then there's going to be also a, a labor seal which mounts on the end of the fixture I don't know where I put that here I have to I have to drill some holes in in this to mount it on the end of the fixture and that's going to go on here as well so that's going to rotate with the fixture so there's going to be this oil seal that's sealing the grease and everything in there and this labor seal which the the shaft fits through. It does fit through there. It's just real close. And so the bearing, this bearing is going to go on here. It's going to go in there. And then the other tapered roller bearing is going to fit on this side. And there'll be a washer here that's kind of a lock washer that I can fold over this nut that goes on here to, to preload the bearings and then there'll be a, a cap over this whole thing that has it has some sealant or a gasket or something that puts that seals all of this off so that no coolant and shavings could go through there so that's and the fixture is going to ro rotate on that so that's that Still got to make this washer. I think I'm going to mill this key slot a little bit deeper into here, so I have a little bit more purchase on that tang of the of the washer. This washer will go in here, and it's going to be bigger in diameter, you know, than this nut. So I'm going to get that nut tensioned, the appropriate tension on the bearings, and I'm going to bend two sides of that washer over here to capture to capture this nut, so it can't back off of there. That's that. Bearing fits pretty close on there. On this. So anyway, I don't know if I could pull these races out of here. You have 
to get them just right or you can They fit that close to where you gotta get it just right or you can't get it out. There. And this one fell out of there. So there isn't very much clearance on that. So anyway, that's the that's the part. The other side done. Next step is to uh, shrink this into the fixture and mount this uh, mount this labor seal on the fixture so that it'll it'll go in here into this notch and. Uh, Mount the whole thing up on the rotary table on the on the A axis on the mill and actually program and mill the fixture to hold the parts and the various clamps. I may uh, I may need to make the clamps first because then I, I can't mount the vise on the table of course once I have the fixture on there. So I'll probably make the clamps first and then uh, and then mill the fixture. Or maybe I'll make the clamps over at my uh, other shop on the bigger, on the horizontal mill. I don't really, I'm not really doing a job right at the moment on the horizontal mill. So maybe I could do that and, and I can mount the fixture over here and mill the fixture and uh, try the clamps on it as I mill it. I'd like to have the clamps first so that when I mill the fixture I can fit the clamps properly in there. So that's it for right at the moment. Till the next video. Thanks for watching.